Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Before we get going, a quick public service announcement. In this season with the barber shops closed and the beauty salons closed, let me just tell you from personal experience, don't try to cut your own hair, okay? All right, great, let's pray. God, uh, we need you, uh, we always need you, but we really need you right now. We pray your grace over this time, you'd lead us in the way we're meant to go, and you'd help us to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want you to think about your life for a moment, and I want you to think about the trajectory of your life. Where are you going with your life? Where do you want to go with your life? At the end of your life, how would you want to have described your life, to be able to say, my life was like this? I imagine like most people, you'd want to say, uh, I, I lived a life that was full of good character. I had good character. I became the person I was meant to become. I had healthy relationships. Uh, I, was, I was good for other people and other people were good for me. I encouraged people. I did all the things I was meant to do. I worked hard, but I prioritized the right things. I loved people well and I received loved well. I was kind to people. And if you're a Jesus follower, really at the end of your life, you would say, I grew into the image of Jesus. So I want, you, I want you to hold on to this idea of this good life that you want to have lived. Now I want you to think about a ship, a great big ship, one of these you know, ships from uh, England in the 1850s, this full rigged ship of the line with masts and giant you know, uh, sails. And there's a crew on board this ship and the ship is the HMS U. It's you, this ship is your life. And you're headed to that destination, that destination of what that life, you want that life to have been like. And that crew, there's two groups in the crew. There's one group that has like a blue kerchiefs around their neck. And there's another group in the crew that has red ones around their neck. The blue ones, that's our thoughts. Those are the things that we think. We talked last week about mental resiliency and talk about taking every thought captive to the cause of Christ. Well, I want you to think about a bunch of thoughts, these thought guys all over the deck of the ship. And sometimes individual thoughts or groups of thoughts, they wanna be the ones at the helm in control of where the ship goes. Then there's the red group. And the red group, those are our feelings our emotions. This week we're talking about emotional resiliency. And those red kerchief fellas, sometimes one of them pops up and goes, I'm gonna steer the ship. And then another one, no, I'm gonna steer the ship. Sometimes the, some of the guys in red are in cahoots with the guys in blue. The things we think line up with how we feel and that starts to steer the ship. And sometimes they're at odds and whoever seems to feel the most or have the strongest thought, that's who's controlling the ship. And this is our life. Every day, sometimes an emotion seems to be driving us, a few emotions, some thoughts, a key thought. And if we were to look at the pattern or, or the course of that ship from above, that ship headed to this destination of the life we want to live can actually look pretty erratic. Sometimes it's headed in that right direction and sometimes it's gone the other way and it's gone back and forth. And it really depends on who's at the controls of the ship. Now let's throw down the anchor for a moment on that metaphor and we'll come back to it. But again, I want to talk about those red kerchief crew members. I wanna talk about emotions today. I wanna to talk about four things about our emotions today. It's important in our emotions to four things. Number one, be grateful. Number two, be understanding. Number three, be responsive. And number four, to be led. Let's start by talking about being grateful. God made us emotional. God gave us our emotions. Now, sometimes we don't like that because don't our emotions get out of control? Don't sometimes our emotions cause us problems, cause that ship to go in the wrong direction because we pop off and respond to something too quickly? We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But we have to recognize God made humans to be emotional. This is how he made us. We have to appreciate that. Animals are not that emotional. 
Squirrels are not that emotional. Dogs are kind of emotional. They get a little happy about this or real happy about that and a little sad about this, but that's about it. Cats have a broader emotional spectrum. They experience both indifference and apathy. That's a joke for Ron because he doesn't like cats. There you go. But God made humans to feel things. Now we overlook feelings a lot. We all like to think of ourselves as primarily logical people. We're very logical people. But a lot of research has been done about our emotions and our logic, and it doesn't line up. What, what they find, what researchers have found, is in fact, our decisions are primarily made by our emotions and we later on put this sheen of logic around it. Jonathan Haidt wrote a book called The Happiness Hypothesis. And in it, he talks about an elephant and a rider. Picture a 12 ton elephant and a 150 pound man who's riding on the elephant. And that man is our logic, but that elephant is our emotions. If there's a disagreement between that little rider and that big elephant, who's going to win? Emotions always. Height and others say that we make decisions based off of our emotions and then later go, you know, actually, here's the logical reason behind that. We're often driven by our emotions. And this is the way God has made us. He doesn't look at us and say, I want you to be unemotional people. Matter of fact, at one point, uh, you can read about this in these neuroscience books, but there was a guy who something happened to his head and the part of his brain that would experience emotions was lopped off for one reason or another in a surgery after something had happened. He couldn't have emotions anymore. So he was strictly logical kind of a Spock type guy. And you'd think, well, that'd be fine because then you could make logical decisions. Here's the thing, this guy couldn't even make any decisions because he couldn't quit thinking about all the factors that he needed to know to make a more logical decisions. decision. Emotions help us. We see in scriptures that Jesus the son of God, the perfect son of God, he evidences emotion. He weeps at the death of Lazarus. He laughs, he's full of joy when good things happen. He's discouraged, he's frustrated. He's angry. He exhibits emotions in the right level, but he exhibits emotions. And we see in the book of Psalms, that's the book that's right in the middle of your Bible. It's a book of songs. And by the way, the reason we listen to music is because it communicates and underlines our emotions. And this book of songs underlines and helps give words to our emotions. In the book of Psalms, it talks about things, emotions like loneliness, love, awe, sorrow, regret, contrition, discouragement, shame, exultation, marveling, delight, joy, fear, anger, desire, grief, all sorts of stuff. So please don't look at your emotions and go, that's ungodly. God made us to be emotional. So be grateful for your emotions. Next, be understanding about your emotions. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. This is in the book of Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, and it says this, above all else, Guard your heart. That's the seat of your will and your emotions. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. That underlines what Height was saying, right? Here's another translation of that. This is from the Passion Translation and I love the way it says it. It says, so above all, guard the affections of your heart because they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your emotions, your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. So don't deny those emotions, pay attention to them. I have a friend who's a counselor, she works with a bunch of people, and what she trains her clients to do is when they experience an emotion, not to go, no, 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 no emotion, to go, even if it's an emotion where it's too much, like too much anger or too much uh, excitement about something that maybe they shouldn't be, whatever it is, she says, I want you to pause the next time you experience that and be curious and ask yourself this, 
huh, why am I feeling this way right now? Why am I feeling this way right now? I was talking with Ron about it this week and he, he talks about journaling his emotions. He doesn't seem like the most emotional guy, but he has emotions like all of us. And he says, he'll, he'll journal out, huh, I'm frustrated. And I think this might be why, and this is what's going on. And I feel this and I feel this. Pay attention to those emotions. Something is being communicated to you through your emotions. And with that, be understanding of them. I had a counselor tell me, I, I, would get, I would get these fear, these moments of massive fear, and I would just wanna shut them up. My counselor would always say to me, hey Jeff, in light of all that you've experienced, doesn't it make sense that you would feel this? Doesn't it make sense that you would feel this? That's being kind to yourself. That's being understanding and saying, no, 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 it's not that they're, they're, they're all wrong and I shouldn't, no, no. In light of these other things I've experienced, wouldn't it make sense that I feel this? One thing to be cautious though about this is that though you are meant to validate your feelings, there's a reason you're feeling what you're feeling. You don't always have to validate the narrative that you're putting together behind that feeling. Validate the feeling, huh, I really do feel scared right now. I really do feel embarrassed right now. I really do feel angry right now. And there's a legitimate reason that I would feel that. But be careful because we don't always understand all of the reasons behind this. If you've ever gotten angry all of a sudden at your children because they did something that bugged you and you went, gosh, I'm, I must be so angry at my children. Maybe, but maybe in fact, something at work happened or there's a, a conflict in another relationship that you've overlooked, but part of that's what's feeding that anger and it just happened to come out at your kids because them dropping a glass was the straw that broke the camel's back, who knows? You can validate the emotion without always validating the narratives that we put together because a lot of times those narratives are wrong. We can identify what we're feeling. We don't always know why we're feeling these things. I have a little girl named Charlotte May and little May May, she's seven years old. And this week she was, uh, she was in bed and like any kid that age, she's suddenly a little scared. I went in there to check on her. She said, I'm scared. And I said, what are you scared about, baby? And she said, I'm afraid of wild animals. Said, okay. And I said, tell me more about that. And she said, see my, my dresser drawer. I like those clothes because I'm afraid there'll be a snake in there. And I said, baby, how would it? I, and, and I affirmed her fear. I said, oh yeah, I, I get that you might be afraid. There's a reason you might be afraid. But I said, baby, talk to me about that snake. And she said, but like maybe, maybe a snake could get in there. And I said, baby, how would that snake get in there? I don't know. Do you, and, I, and I wasn't mocking her. Please don't hear that I was mocking her. I said, baby, do you think like a snake knocked on the door and she starts to giggle a little, knocked on the door and mommy and daddy said, huh, you wanna come? Yeah, well, come on in. And then we said, well, we don't know where to put you. Uh, let's bring you up to the second story and put you in May May's room and put you in her dresser drawer. Do you think that's, that's what, we're, no. I'm afraid of coyotes. Well, do you think a coyote gets a ladder to climb up into you? No. Again, I wasn't mocking her. I was validating the fact that she was feeling afraid, but I wasn't necessarily validating that narrative. I can identify with her fear. When I was a kid, I slept with the covers over my head for about 10 years because I'd seen the orange Oompa Loompas in the Willy Wonka movie. It scared the dickens out of me. But even that was irrational. And so this is when you go back to the ship, our feelings are kind of duking it out with our thoughts. And a lot of times our feelings went over. Just be careful with your feelings. Don't judge yourself for feeling something. Be understanding of yourself. Consider there's a reason you feel the way you feel. So be grateful for your emotions and be understanding of your emotions. But with that, be responsive to your emotions. Responsive, not reactive. And maybe another way to say it is be responsible with your emotions. 
The fact is our emotions can do a lot of amazing things for us. We fall in love. We get excited about a project. We're joyful about this. We have some righteous anger. It can lead us into a lot of great things. But sometimes those emotions, they can, for lack of a better term, they can get the best of us, can't they? They can pull us away and steer that ship away from the life we want to live. It's when our anger boils over and becomes some rage. It's when our embarrassment isn't just embarrassment, but becomes self-hatred or self-condemnation. It's when a good emotion takes over and causes us to go in directions we are not meant to go into. I read this week, someone described it this way. Our emotions are a good gauge and a terrible guide. (laughs) They're a good gauge of what's going on inside of us, but our emotions can be a terrible guide as to where we're meant to go. Ron said this, he said, our emotions can act as a good thermometer, but not a very good thermostat. We need to listen to our emotions, but we also need to be cautious with them and careful with them. Because if we're not, we'll just go in whatever direction we feel. So what if one day you don't feel like going to work? What if I don't feel like showing love to my wife? What if I don't feel like being patient with my children? Those feelings can take us in the wrong direction when there's something deeper we need to be headed towards. Someone wrote a book one time about marriage called Love is a Decision. And that sounds very, oh, I guess love is just a thought process. No, it means that you sometimes do the things that you don't feel like doing because you know there's something better awaiting the other side. Us us trying to uh, head in the right direction with these feelings that go in so many different directions can, can lead to all sorts of terrible things. And so what I'm learning to do for myself, and this is challenging, what I'm learning to do for myself is when I suddenly have that, we'll call it flared feeling, to put a gap between that flared feeling and how I respond, how I react. Someone makes me mad, I want to immediately respond. What if I put a little pause there? What if I put a little pause there and didn't let my emotions immediately drive me and immediately steer over, immediately pull me over here? What if I put a pause there and didn't say the first thing out of my mouth or respond the way I might normally respond to something like that? What if I put that gap in there? Suddenly, the wide-eyed, reckless red kerchief guy can't grab the helm so quickly. I need that space. So we're meant to be grateful for our emotions. We're meant to be understanding of our emotions. We're meant to be responsive and responsible with our emotions. But there's one other thing. And we're meant to be led. I wanna talk about what it means to be led for a moment. Going back to the ship, you've got your thoughts, you've got your feelings, and they're all vying, sometimes together in concert, sometimes one at a time, sometimes groups of them to steer that ship, and sometimes it heads it in the right direction, and sometimes those things don't. And can't it be exhausting? Anybody else get exhausted by your emotions and your thoughts? I know I do. I get exhausted by it. Well, I got to weigh, we talked last week, weigh this thought and is this the way Jesus thinks about these things? And then my emotions, yes, sometimes they can direct me in the right place, but sometimes they can direct me in the wrong place. And it's just this constant, oh, well, I've got this, and I've got this, and, I, and, I, and, I, and it just be, can become a whole, whole lot. But what if, what if my emotions and my thoughts were not meant to be at the wheel of the ship of my life? What if there was supposed to be something else at the wheel? And what if my emotions and my thoughts were meant to go along with that captain? What you think of a captain? Suddenly a captain rises 
from below deck and comes up to the helm. I picture, I like this movie, Master and Commander, so I, I picture that Captain Aubrey coming to the wheel. And that captain, of course, is God, but a better way to think of it is that captain is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, there's God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what's meant to be in the wheelhouse at the helm of our lives. It's the Holy Spirit. God says, it's my gift to you, the Holy Spirit, that leads us into truth and guides us into righteousness and leads us into conviction about sin and draws us in the direction we're meant to go. That's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not my emotions job to steer everything in the right direction. It's not my thoughts, my mind, my mind's job to get everything headed in the right direction. It's the Holy Spirit. My emotions and my thoughts are meant to act as those crew members who let the Holy Spirit lead. It says in the book of Galatians chapter four, verse six, because you're his sons, because we are his children, God sent his spirit, the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out daddy, Abba, father. It's this spirit that is meant to lead us. And it's this spirit of God that is meant to even bring peace to our emotions and our thoughts. A number of years ago, I was talking to an older man and he was so wise and he said this to me. I'll never forget it. He said, God's spirit acts as an umpire and decides with finality all questions that arise in our hearts and in our minds. God's spirit is meant to be at the helm of our lives. And when God's spirit is guiding us and driving us and leading us, my emotions are less likely to steer off in some crazy direction. My sudden thoughts are le less likely to lead away from where I want my life to end up. And those emotions and those thoughts can actually almost serve and applaud the captain, the Holy Spirit at the helm. We've talked about, Ron talked about spiritual resiliency. Last week I talked about mental resiliency and I think emotional resiliency is about being grateful for our emotions, being understanding of those emotions, being responsible and responsive to those emotions, but more than anything, letting us be led by the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know Jesus, you can know him and he can send your Holy, his Holy Spirit into your heart to guide you towards your best life, the life God wants you to live, the life that you deep down want to live. And if you're following Jesus, can I encourage you to invite more of the Holy Spirit in let him lead you. Let him guide you. Well, let's pray. God, I thank you for my emotions. Even though sometimes they get out of control, thank you for my emotions. I bless you that you allow us the kindness, um, that you are understanding to us in our emotions. Help us all to be trained to be more responsible and responsive about those emotions. But God, I pray for all of us we would be guided and piloted and captained by your Holy Spirit. Teach us to lean into your Holy Spirit and to follow you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen.